Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we went about the process of turning our sailing boat into a canal boat. This was quite the process. It involved a lot of work, including but not limited to taking the sails off the boat, building a frame to transport the mast on deck, taking all of the items that usually live on our deck and putting them down below, and of course, unstepping our mast. Once this was done, we had to prepare the mast to be put back on the next morning. If this is of interest to you and you'd like to see the process in more detail, then please click on this link to watch that episode. Otherwise, let's get on with this week's episode. Actually, I don't think the overhang is nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I'm pretty happy with the way it sits. Yeah. The trim's good as well. Yeah. You know, you're putting too much weight that way, you're going to pull the trim up. Yeah. I'm pretty happy I got, you know, my bucket creation, which is two buckets fused together with a towel in the middle, tied in, knitted. I'm pretty happy with that. So I want to brace inside the, uh, the actual supports. Okay. So I want to brace that just by sticking either cloth down there or something yep. just to give it a little bit so it doesn't move around too much because it's movement that's going to that could cause problems yeah so it's going to be braced down and then after that uh we are going to um i'm thinking about making another support but i can do that later on because it's only on two supports but to put something in the middle of the coach roof mm. isn't a problem but it's not bad i thought it would sag yeah it's not sagging at all and I think the foot, the support, the the, the, the the fore support is close enough to the front of the boat that I actually don't think it's going to make too much of a difference um, because a lot, the weight is there. Yeah. The weight is at the end because of the furlex and everything that's there. Yeah. Um, so I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with it all. I think, you know, I want to do some checks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it really. Let's get all on right. with it. You Let's need get... to put it at Bimini up as well. Yes, that's the next job. Okay, let's do it. However, it turned out that that work would have to wait. We were told that another boat needed our space, so before we knew it, we were casting off and making our way toward the Canal du Midi. We are finally underway on the canals. We're not yet in the Canal du Midi. We have to go through a different canal to get to the Canal du Midi. And our first challenge is going to be around lock which is very unusual. Apparently there's only this one. And uh, we went and did a bit of a recce the other day, checked it out and yeah, we've got a bit of a game plan, but it's definitely not something that's in our comfort zone. So we are hoping that our strategy works. Don't feel like we fully know yet whether we have enough fenders out, whether we have our lines in the right place. You know, this is all a bit wait and see right now so yes I'm feeling a bit nervous Nick seems relatively sanguine which is reassuring we're also going up the lock so we're going to be going in and the water level is going to be very low so there's a question over how I am going to get the lines around the bollards it's all good fun we shall see how it all pans out I've got boat hooks I've got my running shoes on in case I have to run around, climb up ladders, and uh, hopefully it'll look great smoothly. I'm sure it will. You have to line me up here, my love. Idea was this? I know. <laughs> Look, we have 
a thousand fenders out. Even if we touch. Looks okay. Oh good, we've got an audience. <laughs> They, their fenders are very low bait and they're very high freeboarded, so what do you mean to not sure. We oh, your telephone, we oh. the metal lot. Finding it rather difficult to manoeuvre around this large and awkwardly shaped lock. This wasn't helped by the fact that we of course had our mast overhang so we weren't used to manoeuvring our boat with several metres of mast hanging off the bow and the stern and unsurprisingly we did end up just gently scraping against the lock sides a couple of times. However no damage was done I'm pleased to say. The buckets were a bit scuffed but the mast itself was completely unscathed. We're going to have to raft though. As I've already said, the round lock was thankfully unique along the Canal du Midi. This was the only lock like this that we would have to negotiate. Unfortunately, it just happened to be our first lock and we still weren't sure what we were doing and how to manoeuvre our newly lengthened boat. However, the general principle still remains the same, whether we're talking about this round lock or the other more usual single locks that we would encounter further along the canal. Because we were going upstream that meant that we entered the lock when the water was at its lowest level. The idea is to secure the boat with bow and stern lines to bollards that sit on the surface of the lock wall and then the lock keeper activates the lock. Water enters the lock sometimes quite quickly creating a significant amount of turbulence. Thankfully that wasn't the case on this day and then the boat is brought up along with the water level. Oh la la, the stress, the stress. Yeah. Yeah, if you just tap on your line a bit, it will just bring our bow out slightly. Thankfully we had amazing and very helpful lock neighbours, a fantastic lock keeper who guided us through the process and before we knew it we were safely up and could continue along our merry way.
that was fun and stressful and I'm just glad it's over to be honest. I need a cold drink and something to eat because I am like shaking from adrenaline. <sighs> wow. We're on the Canal du Midi! It's a river, babe. There's look. There's strong current coming through here. Are you having a nice time? Yeah. No, it's pretty flaming awesome. I know. Next week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we start to get a handle on the lock situation, although just barely, and then we find ourselves in Bezier, which is a beautiful town with gorgeous views. Oh, and we happen to stumble across a beer and music festival.